the Behind the Silicon series has been shot on Snapdragon. Hello or aloha and welcome to the beautiful island of Maui in Hawaii and thanks for tuning in to the very first chapter in the Behind the Silicon series, the making of Snapdragon X. My name is Lucy Hedges and I'm here at the Snapdragon Summit 2023. Qualcomm has a pretty solid reputation when it comes to mobile leadership, powering some of the latest and greatest smartphones on the planet. And this week, the Snapdragon X Elite platform will be taking its center stage. I'll be going on a journey with a bunch of Snapdragon insiders who follow the Snapdragon brand and, you know, really make the Snapdragon insider community what it is. So they'll be following the Snapdragon X Elite platform from the announcement and taking a deep dive into the design, manufacturing and ultimately the launch of new Snapdragon X Elite devices. So on that note, I think we should go and meet them. Hey gang, how are we? Hey, right. Okay, so I'm joined by Paul, Kevin and Saray. Tell us a bit about yourselves. Yeah, sure. My name is Paul. I'm a uh, Snapdragon Insider and content creator from the UK. Mm -hmm. Mainly specialised in sort of reviewing smartphones and stuff, but my YouTube channel is called Geeky Stuff. I'm Kevin. I've been into tech my entire life, but I'm especially passionate about helping others and connecting them with the best of tech out there. I love that. You're passionate. You're a tech enthusiast. Saray, tell us about yourself. I'm Saray, and I have a YouTube channel, and I do all types of tech, but I really like to focus on gaming, phone unboxings, and computing. So I'm dying to know, what are you most excited about when it comes to today's announcement? It has to be the Snapdragon X series announcement and all the AI capabilities and stuff, generative AI and stuff like that. It's just going to be super exciting. Well, especially as a content creator, like how is it going to change the way that I edit content? Is it going to make anything faster and make my process more streamlined? So I can't wait. I've heard that the Orion technology is going to be tied into Snapdragon X series. Just hearing that alone makes me really confident that we're going to be getting something really cool announced. The anticipation is high, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty impressive, right? I mean, look at this screen. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's gonna be a good show. <laughs> There is a new sheriff in town. The Orion CPU is the new leader on mobile computing, period. It's faster than any leading ARM compatible competitor in a single threaded CPU performance. Take a photo. It's faster than leading x86 CPU. Snapdragon X Elite is the new standard for performance and efficiency for Windows PCs. So we've just come out from the announcements and some pretty impressive things were announced on that stage, you know, quite game changing. But what stood out for you the most? The, the whole conference was, was amazing. I even had like goosebumps with, with similar stuff. But the main thing for me was definitely the Snapdragon X series. I have to say the AI, it's like integrated into every aspect. Mm -hmm. And I really like the focus on consumers and how we'll use AI with the Snapdragon um, X Elite. I don't really think of an AI assistant when I'm using my computer, yeah. but that's just something as a content creator, like, hey, like you have this capability now. And the fact that it's on device as well, that's yeah. really impressive. Exactly. As a content creator, I'm really excited about the AI feature really give a lot of extra options and, and ways for us to save time. Snapdragon is making it even easier to have a fully encompassing ecosystem of most mm -hmm. different types of devices. Yes, thanks to Snapdragon Seamless, right? So there were some pretty bold claims made about Snapdragon. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely optimistic as far as performance metrics go, mm -hmm. but what they showed us was above and beyond what I was expecting. It's really something that's very impressive. I think the whole room, there was a collectible, yeah, was. audible gasp, wasn't there? Just yeah. huh. Hello, Alex. Hello. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. We've got a bunch of questions for you that we're going to fire at you. So you ready? Sure. All right. So today was obviously a huge, huge announcement. But um, what shift do you think we'll start in the PC landscape? AI is now on the foreground. All the background applications are still there. But the ones in the foreground, where they actually assist you in doing something, and it helps you save time, and it helps you do tasks and it can provide good information for you. All that stuff now is something that people will benchmark and say, I need this type of capability and which one of these PCs has that? And then Microsoft backing that up and taking all the advantages that they can off of our hardware to offload what they have in the cloud to run on the device is the inflection point for us. That's where it's gonna be disruptive. 
should we expect also different form factors? So since it's more power efficient, technically you could have a smaller battery. Our, our business, because we were born and bred in mobile, was to build the highest performance capability that we can with a power constraint that is limited. Like, you know, a mobile device, pretty small. And so we kind of apply the same, we want to do a PC. Sure. You want to be able to carry a PC everywhere and have the same performance as you would sitting behind your desk. So like over here, you see different configurations. This is the thinnest one, really attractive form factor here. So I'm guessing too, with it being more power efficient, then it doesn't get as hot, right? Or Correct. hot at all. Correct. So then you don't need as big a fan. And in some cases, you don't need a fan. Yeah. That one there has the largest power configuration. So you can push the performance as high as you want. This one is in the middle and this one is the lowest. But nonetheless, it depends on the, your use cases. How do you feel about AI capabilities regarding Snapdragon XLE? We build uh, systems on a chip, a SOC, comprised of multiple cores. So if you look at the computing cores on a device, there's a CPU, GPU, and now an NPU. So that NPU, the neural processor unit, is really our hexagon processor. The cores depend on each other to do the work. Altogether, they can do 70 tops. That's, it's huge. But then the biggest improvement is, is that hexagon NPU. In the past six years has increased 100x. I think from an AI perspective, uh, there's, not a, there's not a competitor that's close to us at this point. So we now have the pleasure of chilling, you know, just hanging out with Gerard Williams, Senior VP of Engineering. Hello. Hello. Can you just explain to us why the Orion CPU, why is this such a monumental announcement? Well, the, uh, the journey actually was a long one. All this gray hair that you guys see here, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of years of experience. We spend a lot of time in the engineering organization kind of studying the competition, understanding what they're good at, what we're good at. Um, and the really hard part of those numbers that we were shown today, the score is impressive. You'll see a lot of the competition actually hit a score like that. But the thing that they, a lot of them don't do is give you that score with this little bitty power. Uh, it's, it's those two things together that are really challenging. Yeah. Qualcomm's got a very, very strong team. Every piece that we break down, we look at how much power it consumes. Sometimes it may be a watt, sometimes it might be 10 milliwatts, but we, even though that's 10, it's not zero, right? Yeah. So we will literally go look at every one of those, I call them little buckets of power, and figure out what can we tear out of the design. And there will be giant pools of one milliwatt, but when you roll it all together and you look at it in the platform, you will see CPU, memory system, the DRAM, the way we put the chip together, the thermal solution that we build with it as well. If you do it right, the power will actually drop. Were there yeah. times in the development where the team kind of just hit a roadblock and then you have to do a bunch of trial and error? That happens yeah. all the time. You'll literally come up with an idea and you go, oh man, this is the greatest thing ever. The designers will go dig, 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 dig. You have to think, I'm going to take 10 steps forward, two steps back. And sometimes it'll look like you regress, but you're actually not. How's the decision made regarding, you know, what you guys focus on in the next chip set? Um, yeah, really what I do and what the engineering team does, we spend a lot of time looking at the good. Then we'll look at a bunch of applications, if we can get the data, about things that are bad. And then if there's a way that the engineering team can actually make it better, um, it'll try to roll that into the next design. Likely though, it may take two generations for that to to happen. Year one, I'm studying the problem. Year two, I'm building it. Year three, I'm trying to go to product. If I get a product and I'm starting to actually measure, I'm already potentially two generations in, meaning I can only apply it to the third. What are your highlights from today? I have to say like just the, the behind the scenes of it all, how long it takes the process, how much testing goes into it. Yeah, it's just like a, a brain overload in, in a sense. I was so <laughs> I saw... really history has been made today too. Yeah. I mean, we're going to be hearing about the X series most likely indefinitely, right? And this is where it all started today here in Maui. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Rachel Lemire. I'm a product marketing manager that's working on Snapdragon Exelite. 
we're at a critical inflection point where all computing processors are going to need to be equipped with the efficiency and power to um, handle some of these large language models. One of those is Stable Diffusion, which has been built into our AI assistant, and we're going to do some generative AI art. Basically, just want to see how fast it's going to like generate my whatever my prompt is. Um, so, so I mean, it's super fast. Roller coaster that goes to the moon. That looks really fun. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely coming up with its own creative ways yeah. of showing what we're asking it. And I think the most impressive thing about it too is the fact that it's all happening on board on the device itself. Wow, that was really quick. It's the end of day two, gang. What are you looking forward to the most as you continue on this journey um, to discover the making of Snapdragon X Elite? Seeing how those little chips are actually made, like what goes into it. You guys might not see me at every single event, but I'm really excited to see the engineers take and how they get everything going. Yeah, and like how the start like designing these uh, sort of chips and stuff. We're always so focused on the final product, right? That's yeah. what we yeah, enjoy, yeah. that's what we're passionate about. I think this next chapter is gonna give us a whole new perspective on what it takes to even create all these various devices. It's finally making laptops fun and interesting again. It really has been such an exciting, innovative and really groundbreaking couple of days here at the summit. In the next episode of our Behind the Silicon series, our insiders are gonna continue on their journey into the making of the Snapdragon X Elite platform. What goes into the architecture Architecture and what exactly goes into designing a processor designed specifically for AI. Bring it in, guys! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>